We have already covered quite a few sliders from awards featured websites. So this time, I turn to Dribble for fresh inspiration. While browsing, I discovered this amazing carousel concept by Roman Salo. So I decided to bring this concept to life. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to use some basic JavaScript along with GSAP to create this impressive slider which is responsive as well. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. To access the source code for this project and many others, check out CodeGrip Pro using the link in the description. Alright, let's dive into the code. Let's start by adding a navigation bar and a footer. We'll include a few links and some text to ensure that the page doesn't look empty. Now let's create the main component, the slider. We'll divide the slider into two parts, the titles and the images. For the titles, we'll add a few titles using the h1 tag. We'll showcase three titles at a time on the screen, so make sure to repeat the first two titles at the end to ensure each title has its turn becoming active. Next, we'll split the slider images into two parts, the top and the bottom. We'll use a clip part to create a split effect. That's pretty much it. Let's move on to the styling. Let's start by resetting the default margin, padding and box sizing for all elements. We'll set the width and height of the HTML and body to 100% of the viewport with a dark background and define the fonts. We'll also hide any overflow. For images, we'll position them absolutely, making them cover that container fully with object fit cover. The navigation and footer will be fixed, spanning the full width with padding and centered content. Links and paragraphs will have no text decoration, white color and a font size of 14 pixels. The links inside the footer will be spaced evenly using flexbox. The navigation will be positioned at the top and the footer at the bottom of the viewport. The slider will take up the full width and height of the viewport. The slide titles will be positioned absolutely, spanning 300% of the viewport width to allow smooth sliding for the titles. We'll make them non-interactive with pointer events set to none and give it the highest Z index. Each title will have flex value of 1 so that they share equal space of the total 300 viewport width, centered horizontally and vertically using flexbox. The inactive titles will have a semi-transparent white color while the active title will be fully white. The slide images container will be centered and given a slight opacity. We'll use clip part to create a split effect for the top and bottom images with smooth transitions on hover. For responsiveness, we'll adjust the slide images to fill the container on smaller screens and adjust the clip part to remove the split effect. The titles will also adjust their opacity and size to fit the smaller screens better.
We'll start by initializing the current index to 1 and setting the total number of slides to 7. Next, we'll create a function called update active slide to manage the active state of the titles. This function iterates over all the title elements using for each and adds or removes the active class based on whether the current index matches the elements index. The main function handle slider manages the slide transitions. It increments the current index or resets it to 1 if we have reached the last slide. We then use gsap to animate the slide titles by moving them horizontally. Inside this function, we call update images with the next image number and update active slide to refresh the active title. The horizontal position is calculated in such a way that ensures that each slide moves by one ninth of the container's width. The update images function handles the image transitions. It creates new image elements for the top and bottom parts of the slider, sets their source to the appropriate image, and initializes their styles with clip path and transform properties. The initial clip path makes the images invisible and the transform scales them up. We append these new images to the top and bottom image containers. Then we use gsap again to animate the clip path making the images visible and scale them back down to their original size. This transition effect is staggered by 0.15 seconds for a smooth appearance. To manage memory and performance, we'll define the trim access images function to remove all the extra images from the DOM. This function ensures only the latest 5 images remain in the DOM by removing the oldest images if the count exceeds 5. Finally, we add an event listener for the DOM content loaded to initialize the slider and set up a click event listener on the document to trigger slider transitions when the user clicks. We also call update images with the initial image number and update active slide to set the first active title when the page loads. That was it. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.